Good evening, guys. Give me one moment. Deme un momentito para pasar la asistencia. Eh... Disculpas ahí por esos dos minutitos que me tardé, pero yo se los voy a reponer al final, ¿ok? Que es entre la transición de una y la, la clase que está antes y esta clase, ¿verdad? Así que, thank you so much for being on time. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Give me one moment. Ya les comparto aquí la presentation. So yesterday we had the introduction, right, of um, the gerunds and infinitives, right? We were talking a little bit about this uh, um, specific topic. And also I'm going to pass the attendance before just to make sure that most of you are here. Veamos, give me one second. There we go. So Ada Agar Burgos Magaña. Present. Thank you, Ada. Brenda Isabel Castro Ruiz. Present. Thank you very much. Claudia Lisette Velázquez de Salgado. Present. Thank you, Damari Saraí García Cerón. Daniel Alejandro Llanes Díaz. Eliu Fernando Flores Díaz. Present, teacher. Thank you. Elsie Cristina Correa de Ramírez. Present. Gracias. Flor Noemí Dimas de Rivas. Francisco Antonio Calderón Rivera. Present, teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Jiménez Rivera. Gabriel José Hernández López. Gisela Emperatriz Cañas Bonilla. Present. Gracias. Héctor Iván Pérez Martínez. Presente. Gracias. Iván Ibrahim Ramírez Quijano. Presente, teacher. Gracias. Julio César Campos Yara. Presente, teacher. Gracias. Carla Alicia Barrera Mena. Carla Present, Elena. Teacher. Ah, ok. Gracias, Carla Alicia. Carla Elena López Rivas. Present, teacher. Gracias. Kevin Alexander Sánchez Ramos. Present. Gracias. María Dolores García de López. Present, teacher. Gracias. Rebeca María Rosales Romero. Present, teacher. Gracias. Wendy Paola López Martínez. Present, teacher. Gracias. Xiomara Violeta Salazar Iraeta. Present. Gracias. Jocelyn Elizabeth González Cartagena. Present, teacher. Gracias. Muy amable. Ok. Vaya, eh, fíjense chicos, solamente este, una cosa antes de comenzar y es algo que yo explico el primer día de clases, ¿verdad? No sé si ustedes se recuerdan, eh, solamente eh, pedirles un favor, ¿verdad? Y comentarles también. Recordemos de que cuando usted va a faltar o usted tiene un inconveniente, bueno, primero, pues, en serio, ¿verdad? Que de repente pasan cosas eh, o nos enfermamos o nos sentimos mal, ¿Verdad? O, o se nos presenta una emergencia, como todos, ¿verdad? Como a todos. Entonces, solamente nada más quería aclarar algo, porque luego se dan malos entendidos, ¿verdad? Yo no estoy autorizada a darles ningún permiso para faltar. De hecho, este programa de Insaforp no reconoce justificaciones. Quiere decir que si usted no llegó a clase, usted no llegó a clase, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, de verdad yo les agradezco mucho porque ustedes me avisen a mí que tienen un inconveniente o que, o, que, o que no van a poder presentarse. Pero por favor, si usted me dice a mí, no diga que yo le di un permiso porque yo no, no de ningún momento estoy autorizada a dar permisos para faltar a esta clase, ¿verdad? Este, lamentablemente, como les digo, el programa no funciona así. Entonces, si usted no asiste a la clase, son minutos de conexión que ya no se le ya no se le guardaron a usted, ¿verdad? En, en su asistencia. Yo paso lista, pero no soy la encargada de su asistencia. 
quiere decir que usted tiene que comunicarse con coordinación, ¿verdad? Si ha, si ha habido un evento, pero les doy un consejo. ¿Qué haría yo? Yo no diría nada. Simple y sencillamente me conectaría a mi clase si yo puedo. Digamos, si me presentó una emergencia, porque yo ya lo he hecho antes, digamos, como estudiante, ¿verdad? Si yo de repente no puedo faltar, yo no digo nada. Yo simple y sencillamente sé que tengo que una clase y me conecto a como yo pueda. Si de repente estoy en un lado y puedo ponerme un audífono, me lo conecto, ¿verdad? Pero es necesario que usted se conecte a sus clases, ¿verdad? Este, usted no se preocupe. Si de repente yo digo su nombre, yo no soy de las personas que, que pide asistencia por nombre. Perdón, que pide participación por nombre. Fulanito, dígame tal cosa. No, yo soy de las que pregunta quién tiene la respuesta o quién quiere participar, levante la mano. De acuerdo, entonces solamente quería aclararles eso, que es algo como les digo que yo digo desde, desde el principio de la clase, pero sí quería este, presentarlo nuevamente porque se dieron, se dieron situaciones, ¿verdad? Y la verdad es que nunca me habían escrito tanto diciéndome que iban a faltar a clase, ¿verdad? Es la primera vez que me pasa. Entonces, si usted tiene un inconveniente, ¿verdad? No se preocupe. Usted, a como pueda, si se puede conectar, hágalo. Si de repente no pudo, pues tiene que reportarlo a la persona encargada de su asistencia. ¿De acuerdo? Este, y nuevamente, repito, ni yo ni nadie de coordinación eh, podemos darle un, un permiso porque los permisos en este programa lamentablemente no se pueden dar. No hay justificaciones, ¿verdad? Entonces, solamente quería aclarar ese puntito ¿verdad? para que no tuviéramos inconvenientes y tampoco se les, les afecte su asistencia, ¿verdad? Este, eso y ¿qué más era lo otro? Ah, y bueno, cualquier pregunta, ¿verdad? De la plataforma, siempre recordemos que se va a resolver acá en la clase. ¿De acuerdo? Este, dígame, Rebeca. Teacher, fíjese que en, en mi caso, en la plataforma, yo es primera vez, ¿verdad? No, no había estado en un curso anterior. Sí, es bastante amigable y he interactuado bien, he hecho los ejercicios, pero ahora que publicaron en el grupo pude darme cuenta que aparecía, por ejemplo, que solo había desarrollado creo que el 97%. Yo entré, revisé y la verdad es que no sé en qué me quedó, o sea, no haber completado, digamos, el 100% de, de lo que se tenía que llenar aquí en la plataforma, ¿verdad? Yo entré y revisé todo lo de la se Section 1, pero no encontré en qué era lo que me hacía falta porque para completar, digamos, ese 100%. Uh -huh. Fíjense que yo lo que recomiendo, porque una vez me pasó hace bastante, hace como dos años, a alguien que también tenía la misma situación, entonces yo lo que le recomendé fue que se fuera acá a la plataforma y que le diera clic a pro Progress, aquí ve, Progreso. Entonces aquí en Progress usted puede ver, ¿verdad? Acá abajo, mire. Aquí dice section 1, section 2, section 3, 4, 5. Entonces, cuando usted se viene, aquí es donde le van a aparecer una barrita, ¿verdad? De todo lo que ustedes han hecho. Pero aquí abajo, usted puede ver cuáles son las que aparecen que no están completas. Entonces, le recomiendo que se vaya a esa parte y mate alguno y le va a aparecer que no está completo por algún motivo, ¿verdad? Eh, y me avisa. Uh -huh. Revise y a ver qué, qué le aparece a usted. ¿De acuerdo? Okay, okay. Vaya, vaya chicos, entonces we're going to go back to the class, right? And yesterday we were talking about uh, infinitives and gerunds. And I was saying that sometimes we use infinitives and gerunds to describe a purpose. And we are going to use the verb use, right? It is used for, and then you explain with a gerund, you know, um, the, the purpose of that. So... You know, taking into account here are the examples that we have, right? Uh, a modem is used to connect computers to phones, right? Computers are often used to write letters. I can use the World Wide Web to find information. Now, I was saying that if I'm using the verb use, or if I include the verb use, right, to, to explain purpose, it is recommended to use an infinitive. Right, and if you see, si usted se fija, más eh, es más común 
¿verdad? To use it in the passive voice, usarlo en la voz pasiva, right? It is used to connect computers to phones, right? Um, for example, your glasses. Your glasses are used to see better, right? Um, what else? Well, a hat, for example, I, a hat is used, right, uh, to protect you from the sun, right? Then what happens with the gerunds, okay? It's used for connecting computers to phones. They're often used for writing letters, and I can use it for finding information, right? So in this case, we have, again, the verb use, but if you are using the preposition, and that this is what I said yesterday, if you are using the preposition for, remember that every time we use a preposition, we are going to include a gerund right after it. Siempre, siempre, siempre después de una preposición viene un gerund. Okay. So and and this happens. This this happens to be you know this type of combination, right? Used, but if you're using for you use a gerund right after it, okay? So, ahí fue donde nos quedamos ayer. Now, it says, uh, what do you know about this technology? Complete the phrases in column eight with information from column B, then compare with a partner, okay? We have satellites are used, robots are sometimes used. You can use a fax machine. People use the internet, DNA, uh, fingerprinting is used and see the room it's sometimes used so what I need you to do guys is to make up sentences okay using um, this information if you want what I'm going to do it's that I'm going to share um, I'm going to give you a close-up so you can see better okay let me take a look and here we have the examples okay Okay, so here you have two examples. Satellites are used for transmitting telephone calls or satellites are used to transmit telephone calls, okay? So let's go ahead and create sentences, okay? Let's do it together. Vamos a irlas apuntando acá en el cuadrito, okay? So what sentences can you make up with these chunks, con esos pedacitos, verdad? Porque esos son chunks, sentence chunks. Mm -hmm. Yes, eh, Xiomara. Uh, the first one is satellites. Satellites. Satellites are used to study the world's weather. Okay, Satell satellites, satellites are used to? Are used to study the world's weather. Mm -hmm, to study the world's weather. Muy bien. Anyone else? Oh, but Xiomara, in this case, eh, this is using two. ¿Cómo lo haríamos con four, incluyendo four? Are used for studying the world's weather. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. Eh, Carla, please. Uh, robots are sometimes used to perform dangerous tasks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Robots are sometimes used to perform to perform what ah dangerous tasks okay dangerous tasks okay very good and with four that will be used for performing right for performing okay thank you very much carla anyone else no. yes Give me one moment, guys. Voy a abrir la ventana porque está haciendo mucho calor. But I, I closed the window because it was raining. But just give me one moment.
Thank you, guys. So, uh -huh. what other sentences can you make up with this? You can use a fax machine to make a photocopy. Okay, you can use a fax machine to make a photocopy. Muy bien. Okay, and with four, that would be you can use a fax machine for making a photocopy, right? Okay, thank you. Carla, please. Mm -hmm. People use the internet, you said, right? Que casi no se le escucha. Me dijo, people use the internet, ¿verdad? Okay. Yes. Ajá, uh -huh. to, to... To make travel reservations. Okay, very good. To make travel reservations. Ajá, uh -huh. muy bien, okay. Y la otra sería, people use the internet for making travel reservations. Muy bien. Thank you. Eh, María Dolores. Verify. Fíjense que les, se le escucha cortado, María Dolores. Eh, ¿Y ahora, teacher? Mucho mejor. Ah, pero eh, se le desactiva el micrófono de repente. Ajá. Eh, number five. Uh -huh. DNA, finger springer, thing is used to. Uh, Identify criminals. Mm -hmm. To identify criminals. Okay. So fingerprinting is used to identify criminals. Okay. Very good. And the other one would be DNA fingerprinting is used for identifying criminals. Right. Okay. Perfect. And let's see Francisco Antonio. Thank you, teacher. Number okay. six. See, the room is sometimes used to store an encyclopedia. Okay, yeah, I remember that. See, the room uh -huh, is sometimes... In a few times, really. <laughs> yeah, it's used, let me see, it's sometimes used uh -huh, it to store an encyclop encyclopedia. I think it's encyclopedia. Encyclop mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So a cedar room is sometimes used to store an encyclopedia, okay? Yes, uh, Hector? Uh, you can use a fax machine to make a photograph. Oh, really? Can you do that? Okay. Okay. You can use me dijo, a fax, machi fax machine to make a photograph. Can we do that? Se puede hacer eso. Yeah, make a photocopy, yeah. Yes. Ah, a photocopy. Yo escuché que me dijo a photograph. Okay. Sí, esa ya la teníamos. Okay, very good. I'm going to share them with you. Se la voy a compartir. Bear with me. Ahí está. Ahí está. Okay. So those are the sentences that we made up. Muy bien. Entonces, that's the way how we're going to use it. Do you have questions? Pregunta, chicos. Questions about the about the exercise? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Una consulta, entonces eh, cuando te usamos eh, for es porque está el ing. Eh, usamos for, ajá, cada vez que usamos una preposición, en este caso for es un ejemplo de ella, de esas preposiciones que tenemos. At, si necesitamos un verbo después de esa preposición, el verbo debe ir con ing. Por ejemplo, si yo le pregunto... 
Uh, have you thought about selling your car? Have you considered selling your car? ¿Verdad? Have you con no, have you thought about, perdón, vámonos con about. Have you thought about selling your card? About is a preposition. So, okay. si yo necesito un verbo después de about, necesita ir con ing. Yo no puedo decir, have you thought about sell your car? Uh, uh, no. Have you thought about okay. selling? Entonces, si tengo una preposition, el verbo que viene por regla debe eh, ir con ing. Uh -huh. Ok, gracias. You're welcome. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Entonces, here we have in 2.2, right? And as you can see here, we have the same example, right? I mean, exercise. You need to complete the exercises or the phrases by selecting either an infinitive or a gerund, okay? So in this case, it's similar to the one that we just studied. Now in 2.3 or section 2.3, participants will notice and practice stressed words, right? With more than two syllables, okay? So stressed words, stressed words are Um, let me see. Mm, Daniel, me escucha. Sí, sí, le escucho. Pero ah. eh, había pasado algo con, su, con la conexión. No sé si era la mía o si era la suya. Mm. Pero sí, hubo un momento en que me sacó del. del, del no, pero de si, la le sal sala. si lo sacó. No pudo haber sido yo, porque si lo hubiera, si me hubiese sacado a mí, los hubiese sacado a todos. Entonces, okay, okay. Entonces ajá. Sí, mi conexión era, maybe. Sí, ajá. Es Perhaps que cuando... Conexión. Yeah, when, when, when the signal drops, it kicks you out of the meeting. Ajá, so it's because of the signal, right? But yeah, I'm sorry, I'm okay, sorry, te veo el mensaje. Thank You're you. welcome. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now here we have an example, you know, on syllable stress, right? Now the first, I think the very first lesson included here is in, um, I think it's Principiante Uno, right? Where, where they introduce the syllable stress, right? So where is the stress in these words and compound nouns mark the stressed syllable? Now, compound nouns are, you know, nouns, that are combined together and they create a new word. For example, uh, fingerprinted. We have two words. We have finger printed, right? And 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 sometimes you know we analyze or we studied a little bit of uh, stressed, right? Stress or syllable stressed with one syllable. Um, words or palabras monosyllabas. But in this case, we have more than one syllable, which makes it interesting, right? And that's the reason why sometimes it's a little bit difficult to identify where the stress of those words is. Now, let's take a look in here. Let me see if I'm able to go back to the uh, platform. Yeah, here we are, okay? I'm going to share with you the information here presented in the in the platform and then we're going to continue the stress in these words can you pronounce them very good can you repeat with me languages telephone transmission robotics understand VCR. Bueno, aparentemente no incluyeron en la, las que estaban acá, entonces vamos a verlas acá conmigo. Ok, so these are uh, more than one syllable uh, words, right? So we have television, television programs, right? Television programs, programs. So the Aquí, para saber dónde está el, el stress, what you need to do is to um, 
stressed the different syllables that we have, right? For example, if I say television, 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 right? Pareciera que it's in the middle, right? Uh, programs. Can I say programs or programs, right? Programs. So the stress is at the very beginning. In the first uh, syllable. Exactly. Also, programs. programs. Mm -hmm. So another um, tip that I will give you is always to use word reference, your dictionary, right? And what you can do is to come here and to add the word, right? You type the word, for example, television, right? Television, here we have. So for you to know where the stress is, you come here to the dictionary, y aquí en el diccionario van a encontrar esto, okay? We have different pronunciation, um, pronunciations here. Let's listen to the UK pronunciation. Television. Television, right? Television. So apparently it's over here, tel television, right? Now let's listen to the North American. Television. Television, right? So if you see, they are inverted. Están invertidos. Estas como que son comillitas o apóstrofes que ustedes ven acá. Son las que dicen dónde está el estrés o la acentuación primaria y la secundaria, ¿verdad? Television. Television, right? So it's like we have one primary and, and, and a secondary stress, okay? What about program? Okay, look. Program. Ahí está al principio. You see? And we have the two versions, right? Program. Program. Look. Program. Right? What about the North American version? Program. Program. Look. It's like this. So the stress goes at the very beginning. ¿Verdad? Entonces, when you have doubts on how to pronounce some of these words, you can come here and you will find the answer. So, for example, photocopy, right? Photocopy. Oops. Okay. Look, we have the two versions, right? Photocopy. Photocopy, right? Photocopy. Okay. So we have two, uno primario y uno secundario. Photocopy, right? So it goes from the very beginning y también vuelve a sonar en, in between, okay? So whenever we need to pronounce, you know, uh, words that have more than one syllable, it is recommended to look for it in the dictionary before you go ahead and use it. For example, when you have a presentation, and the presentation is in, in English, right? And one of the important points whenever you deliver a presentation is that you need to check and to do your research before you come to your audience. So let's say that you have a presentation, but it had happened to me before that students come to the classroom and they ask, Teacher, in the middle of the presentation, right? Teacher, how do you pronounce this word? Ah, es tal, ¿verdad? So what I would do is that I would discount points. Descontaba puntos por hacer preguntas en la presentación, ¿verdad? Cuando hay que hacerlas antes, ¿verdad? Hay que hacer la investigación antes. So whenever you have a presentation and you are not sure about how to pronounce a word, please check the word first in the dictionary. Otherwise, you will come to the front of your audience and you will make mistakes, right? So that's that's the reason why it is important to always carry a dictionary or to look up for the word in a dictionary in your computer or you can download the app, right? So you can have a better understanding on how to pronounce the word. Now, something that I have noticed is that students that are studying any language, I'm not talking only about English, the students are not using their dictionaries when actually you have to, right? It's not the same to ask 
you know, for the meaning to someone else than to look up for the word yourself. Because if you look up for the word yourself, you will remember the process that you went to your phone, you entered the word, you played on, you played up the word for you to listen to it, you read the definition, and probably you moved to another word and you learned another word. So it's a lot more uh, helpful, right? Now, one other point, right, that we have in the platform, okay? I'm going to show you here. Is this one. I'm going to move on to the next point. There is a conversation here, okay? That is related to, a, to again, a infinitives, okay? Now, let's take a look. It says, I read the instructions, but I'm still not sure how to use my cellular phone. Actually, it's pretty easy. First of all, don't forget to turn it on. Got it. Then, dial the number and remember to press the send button. That's all? Pretty much. Just make sure to recharge the batteries every few weeks and try not to drop it. It's fragile. Good advice. And one more thing, be sure to pay the phone bill every month, right? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the topic that it's in this conversation, okay? The topic of the conversation is infinitive complements. So how do they work? ¿Cómo funcionan los infinitive complements? Well, they are phrases like the, like the ones that you can see. <clears throat> Don't forget to turn it on. Remember to press the send button. Make sure to recharge the batteries. <clears throat> Try not to drop it. And be sure to pay the phone bill every month. Okay, now what happens with these uh, phrases? Okay, these are the phrases that we got from the conversation. Okay, now what happens with the phrases? Because of the nature of the phrase, it is necessary to go ahead and use an infinitive right after it. Don't forget, and then you use the infinitive. Don't forget to turn it on. Remember to. Remember to press the send button. Make sure to. Make sure to recharge the batteries. Try not to. Remember, if you are using infinitives and if you want to use it in the negative form, you have to add the, the not particle before. Hay que agregar el not o la partícula not antes del, del, del infinitivo. Make sure not to drop it. Right? Um, be sure to pay the phone bill every month. Right? Now, if you see, don't forget, this is un verbo. Remember uh, another verb. Sure is an adjective. Uh, try, it's another verb. Sure, again, an adjective. Si ustedes recuerdan el día de ayer, yo les mencioné que tenemos diferentes usos. We have different uses, right, for infinitives. And we, Give me one second. Es que la cámara tiene falso, entonces si medio topo la mano se, se desactiva. Entonces, I was saying, if you, right, um, remember, there is a list. Hay una lista específica para gerunds and infinitives. Entonces, for example, forget, remember, try. Esos tres verbos siempre van con un infinitivo. Bueno. En el caso de try, creo que puede ir con infinitivo gerundio. Cualquiera de los dos. Okay? Entonces, ¿pero qué sucede también con los adjectives? Yes, con adjectives también usamos infinitives. Y el típico ejemplo que, y del que tiene que recordarse cuando vea ese tipo de estructuras es nice to meet you. Or I'm glad to meet you. Right? Glad is an adjective. Nice is an adjective. Right? And whenever we are using adjectives, y si hay un adjetivo, yo necesito un verbo después de ese adjetivo, it has to be infinitive, 
Okay, so forget, remember, try. These are verbs that we are we, that are used with infinitives, and sure, it's an adjective. Therefore, the verb that comes right after it is going to be a an infinitive. Okay. It says, look at these pieces of advice. Which ones refer to the microwave oven with the letter M, a hair dryer with the letter H, a laptop computer with the letter L? Now, more than one answer is possible. Then think of another piece of advice for each thing. So, what about number one, guys? Unplug it after you use it. What do you think this piece of advice can be used for? Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, it can be a laptop computer. Yeah, unplug it after you use it. Very good. Uh -huh. What else? A hair dryer. The hair dryer. Yes, definitely. The best thing to do with this type of device, I mean, yeah, devices, it's, well, no, it's not a device, it's an appliance, quizás, but mm -hmm. these appliances, appliance. uh -huh, it's to unplug them. Mm -hmm, very good. What about number two? Save your work often. Yes, Carla? Laptop computer. Yes, right, with your laptop computer, right? You have to be very careful because we never know when they are going to betray us, right? Okay. What about the next one? Number three, recharge the batteries often. The laptop computer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because we can use it. I mean, but we need to make sure that our battery is still, you know, um, okay, right? If not it's better to go ahead and uh, recharge the battery. Keep it away from water. Her dryer. Keep... Her dryer, okay. Keep it away from water. Well, actually I think, yeah, I think the three of them, right? Yeah, three of because, them. Because uh -huh, I have to keep them away from, you know, water. Otherwise they will get damaged. Number five, don't spill drinks on it. Me teacher, a laptop uh -huh. computer. A laptop computer, right? Wow, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's the reason why, you know, if you have if you're working or if you are doing something, or even at the office, right? They ask you to carry a mug with a with a with a lead. Because mm -hmm. uh-huh, they 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 in that way, you know, your coffee or your beverage, right, won't spill on the desks. Uh -huh. So it needs to have a lid. Uh, what about the next one? Don't put metal in it. To a microwave oven. To a microwave oven, yeah, right? Microwave. Otherwise, a disaster, you know, might yeah. happen. Um, don't heat closed containers in it. the same to a, a, a microwave, microwave oven. Correct, right, the microwave oven. Yeah, those are the type of appliances we need to be very careful with, right? They seemed kind of, you know, um, how can I, well, har harmless, harmless, but actually they're not. <laughs> uh, don't expose it to the to extreme heat or cold. A laptop computer teacher. Okay, a laptop computer. Well, I didn't know that, but I, it sounds it sounds um, um, logical, right? But yeah, I mean, all of these, as you can see, are infinitive complements. Now, you see the positive form and the negative form, right? So, if you are going to use infinitive complements with the negative form. So in this case, this is these are just examples. They are using imperatives, right? Unplug it after you use it. 
save your work often, recharge the batteries often, keep it away from water. But then we have here a, the, um, the negative, don't spill drinks on it, don't put metal on, in it, don't heat closed containers in it, and don't expose it to extreme heat or cold, okay? So uh, another piece of advice, guys, that you can give for these um, appliances, pieces of advice, okay? Let's say, let's go ahead and, 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 and create, okay, pieces of advice. Vámonos ya con las frases que habíamos visto al principio, okay? Don't forget to, remember to, try to, try not to, make sure to, and be sure not to. So what would be... Yo. What would be an example, right, of, of these ones? Examples? Don't forget to turn the, the, to turn the light. To turn off or turn on? Turn off. Muy bien. Don't forget to turn off the lights. Muy bien. To turn off. No es off, ¿verdad? It's off. Eh, Carla. Don't forget to do a homework. The homework. No, uh -huh, the homework, porque es, no lo podemos pluralizar. Eh, yes, don't forget to do homework, or to do your homework, or to do the homework, okay? Eh, Xiomara. Uh, remember, remember to put out the cat. Okay, remember to put out the cat. Put out the, the cat. Put out. Yes. Como sacarlo. Sí, como dejarlo afuera. Ah, okay. Um, creo que put out is something different. Probably don't forget to let the cat out. ¿Verdad? Como dejarlo que salga. Let the cat, the cat out. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Remember to take off your shoes after on the house. Mm -hmm. Remember to take off your shoes before, right? Before entering the house. Como before es una preposición, entonces ocupo un gerundio después, ¿verdad? Remember to take off your shoes before entering the house, right? Uh, another one? Mm -hmm. More examples? Uh, yes, Daniel. Well, the first uh, is don't forget to turn off the laptop after the use. Okay, don't forget to turn off your laptop after using it. Porque es preposición, after using it. Mm -hmm. Using it. Okay. Using it. Okay. Uh -huh. Very good. Excellent. Now, as you can see, guys, it's very um, it's very easy if you learn the phrases, right? So you have a list of six phrases and all what you have to do is to include the infinitive form right, right after it. OK, now there is another point, right? A, a, there is like a knowledge check, I think, right after it. OK. But right now, I'm going to move to a reading. There is a reading, okay? And this reading is a day in your life in the year 2020. Yes, that was in 2023. It says, what are two ways that technology will probably change your life in the next 20 to 20, 25 years, okay? And then it says, in your own ideas, tell us about a change mentioned in the reading in each of these areas. Transportation, food, money, work, communications, entertainment. And there are two questions. Which of these changes, I mean, which of the changes sounds the most interesting and useful? 
Are there any changes that you don't like? Two, imagine you could invent a machine that would make life easier than better. Describe the machine. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and read. So can I have volunteers to read? Vamos a irnos por parrafitos, okay? So, ¿quién dijo mí? Julio. Ah, ok. Solo levanta la mano, Julio, porque ya le ganaron ahí. Vaya, si, okay. eh, Xiomara. Comencemos con el primero. From people until future. Ok. People used to know more or less how their children would like, would live. Live. Now, live, ok. Would live. And now things are changing so quickly that we don't even know what our, our lives will be like in a few years. Um, what follows is not science and fiction, it's how experts see the future. Thank you very much, Simara. Uh, Gisela. Your, your, dra your, your day, daydreaming behind the wheel of your car, but that's okay. You have it on automatic pillow and with its high teach computers and cameras. Your car knows how to get you home safely. Okay, we say safely? Safely. Uh -huh. Y decimos pilot, automatic pilot. Mm -hmm. Automatic Excellent. pilot. Correct. And yes, daydreaming is este, bien común, ¿verdad? Daydreaming, it's like... Uh, que uno se queda ido, soñando despierto, dicen. Okay, so that's a dreaming. What about the next one? Uh, let's see. Bueno, Carla, solo que en el caso suyo casi no se le escucha. Ajá, entonces paso con Francisco. Okay, teacher. You're hungry. So you head for the kitchen as soon as you get home. You ordered groceries by computer and hour ago, hour ago, and you know and you know that by now they've arrived. Your kitchen has a two-way refrigerator, which opens to the outside to accept deliveries. You already paid for the food by having the money subtract from your bank account. Nobody use cash anymore. Thank you very much. And it's refrigerator, refrigerator, right? And refrigerator. Sub, mm -hmm, subtracted. Uh -huh, subtracted. 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 Y ahí el sonido se une con A. Bank account. Bank yeah. account. Uh, hay, hay un link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bank account. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you very much. What about the next one, Carla Elena? What's for lunch? In the old days, you used to stop off to buy a hamburger or pizza. Mm -hmm. Now you use your diagnostic machine to find out which foods your body needs. You find out you need more vegetable and less fat. Your food preparation machine makes you a salad. Very good. And we say diagnostic, right? Diagnostic. Diagnostic. Mm -hmm. Very good. The next one, after lunch, uh, Hector. The, what for lunch in the whole day? You used, I know, pardon, after lunch. After lunch, uh huh. After lunch, you go down the hall to your home office. Here you have everything you need for doing your work. Thanks. You use information screen and your new computer. You almost never going into the office anymore. Okay, thank you, Hector. Cualquier parecido es pura coincidencia, ¿verdad? Okay, then the next one, okay, uh, Wendy. Thank you. The information screen shows an urgent messenger from a co-worker in Brazil. You sit 
the screen to translate Portuguese into English as you wait, you think about later, later when you have a movie transmitter, what movie show you order tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so guys, can you hear all those changes, right? It, there are a lot of things, you know, that uh, change, you know, with time. Now, take a look. These were predictions for 2020. And this book is the third edition. Era la tercera edición de este libro y ahora estamos en la quinta. Ellos ya tienen la quinta edición. So this was a long time ago, right? So let's see paragraph by paragraph. It says people used to know more or less how their children will live. Now things are changing so quickly that we don't even know what our own lives will be in, you know, like in a few years. What follows is not science fiction. It's how experts see the future. You're daydreaming behind the, the wheel of your car, but that's okay. You have it on automatic pilot and with its high-tech computers and cameras, your car knows how to get you home safely. So guys, is it happening now? What do you think about this one? Can you give me an example? What is an example of this? Mm -hmm. Dígame, Daniel. Perhaps some uh, example for this thing is the the, the telephone, the smartphone. Mm, no, but it's about cars mm -hmm. because we're in paragraph number two right now. It oh, says you're, two, you're dreaming behind the wheel of your car, but that's okay. You have it on automatic pilot. And with its high tech computers and cameras, your car knows how to get you home safely. So is this a reality? Is this happening? And is there an example? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, it's a, this, <clears throat> this car uh, is named Tesla. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, the Tesla, the Tesla is another autom automatic, and this has uh, some cameras <laughs> and other sense for uh, detect some object in the in the way. Exactly right. Yeah, that's the first example that came to my mind as well. Tesla, right? So um, these type of cars are you know, smart cards, and they can take you anywhere, right? Or what they need are your instructions. Uh, I mean, to let the, let, let the car know the place where you want to go. And, you know, you just go in automatic pilot. And what about the next one? You're hungry, so you're head for the kitchen as soon as you get home, right? You ordered uh, groceries by computer an hour ago, and you know that by now they've arrived. Your kitchen has a two-way refrigerator, which opens to the outside to accept deliveries. You've already paid for the food by having the money subtracted from your bank account. Nobody uses cash anymore. So guys, is this a reality? Is this happening? And can you give me an example? Uh, yes, Samara. In my case, not. I always pay with cash. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. But but can you tell me, is this happening right now? Is this a reality? Yes, it's a reality. In the most of cases, uh, people ask for delivery and they pay before with uh, their debit card. Yeah, the money is subtracted from the debit card. That's what I write. So in your case, you paid in cash, Xiomara. For me, I have a debit card, but I like to pay in cash, with cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a way, you know, it. it I mean, it, there are so many advantages, Yumara, with paying in cash because you feel that you have control of your expenses. However, we have also advantages, also, I mean, with, with debit cards and credit cards because it allows you to earn points, to earn rewards, right? But está ahí como que you know, advantages and disadvantages, right? So thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Alguien más? Okay. What about this one, guys? Bueno, for this one, the only thing that we, bueno, al menos que yo sepa, verdad? 
the only thing that we don't have right now is a, a two-way refrigerator, right? That can open on the outside. <laughs> yes, Daniel. Okay, teacher, can you help me uh, in this kind of situation? When you can use the word kind or type? Kind of car, type of car. Mm, I think it's either or, Daniel. I mean, there's no, but let's type it, right? Because as far as I know, they mean the same and they are just synonyms. But what's the difference? What's the difference between a type and kind? Kind. It says type is used in the sense of subdivision or category. On the other hand, the word kind is used in the sense of sort. Both type and kind have to agree with the noun they are used with. So if you're using type, es porque hay una subdivisión o una categoría, ¿verdad? For example, my type of blood is, y ahí dice su tipo de sangre, because we have different categories, right? Or um, my favorite type of music is uh, pop because we have different categories of music, right? But if you're using the, the word kind, it's because we're talking about organization, right? So sort is organizing things, you know, into different groups, okay? For example, I like this uh, kind of fruit, for example, right? Because it has a lot of vitamins, et cetera, et cetera, right? But I think if you're talking about categories, you can use type. But in my case, I think, I mean, I used them um, interchangeably. Mm -hmm. So I, that's the difference. Okay, okay. O only we we need to um choose the situation in this kind in, in this kind or type depends to the situation. Um. Bueno, Daniel. Sí, o sea, depende si usted siente que es una categoría la que está, como le digo, yo en mi caso no, okay, okay. no, 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 este, um, how can I say it? Um, no pienso si era una categoría o no, no, yo lo okay. uso interchangeably, ajá. Uh -huh. okay, but okay. si usted ya go, you want to go the extra mile, primero tendría que averiguar, ¿verdad? Si lo que está a punto de decir tiene una subdivisión o una categoría, entonces ahí tendría que utilizar type. Pero si estamos okay. hablando solamente de, um, I don't know, un grupo, ¿verdad? Eh, you can use eh, sword. Mm -hmm. Sword as a noun. Okay. Uh -huh. Sword meaning. Y ese es el significado de sword, ¿verdad? Sword as a noun is a category of things or people having some common feature. O sea, es lo mismo, you see? Ajá, It's entonces, ajá, okay. that's the reason why, por eso digo, es que la verdad es que no, yo no le hay como la diferencia, ¿verdad? Pero probablemente yeah, yeah. creo que está en el, en, la, en el origen de la palabra, nada más. Uh -huh. okay. no hay diferencia, Daniel, no hay diferencia, Daniel. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And... Oh, let me get it. Aquí, ¿verdad? Decía, what's for lunch, right? In the old days, you used to stop off to buy a hamburger or pizza. Now, you use your diagnostic machine to find out which foods your body, need, your body needs. You find out you need more vegetables and less fat. So, your food preparation machine makes, your, makes you a salad. Now, do we have something like this right now? Or is it still, you know, in the near future to be created? What do you think? Do we have something um, that it's kind of similar to that type of robot? Not, uh, not uh, like this robot, but we have um, a machine to make rice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have machines that prepare food for us, but we command it, right? Uh -huh. And we don't have this type of diagnostic machines, but, you know, they they look very, um, well, they sound actually very useful, right? Now, what about the next one, Alex? After lunch, you can, you can go down the, the hall 
to your home office. Here you have everything you need for doing your work. Thanks to your information screen and your new computer, you almost never go into the office anymore. ¿Les parece conocido? So what do you think? Only in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> During the pandemic, right? It became popular. Yes. Mm -hmm. And does any of you guys work from home right now? Or is it, I mean, is any one of you working from home right now? No, no, I teacher, I have to go to to the to the office every day. Oh, okay. You have to go. Oh well. I'm sorry to hear that that <laughs> you don't have at least one porque hay unos que se quedaron por lo menos con uno, ¿verdad? One day from home. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that if you work from home, you work even more because it, it's very difficult for you to unplug, you know, from from your duties. And I think it's healthy to go to the office in person because it helps you to socialize, to walk, like, I don't know, to wander, you know, in, in your mind. But if you stay a lot at home, that also can, you know, create a sense of uh, enclosedness, right? And you feel isolated for a reason. So guys, I'm going to stop here because it's time already, but it was nice, you know, to, I mean, I, I really liked the, the reading and I'm going to just pass the attendance and I will mention the, the, the people that didn't answer at the beginning. Uh, Damaris, Sarai Garcia León. Presente, Cerón. ¿Y yo qué dije? León. Ay, no, disculpe, ya le cambié el apellido. I'm sorry, Damaris. Daniel Alejandro Janes Díaz. Present teacher. Thank you. Flor Noemi Dimas de Rivas. No, eh, Francisco Ernesto Jiménez Riv Rivera. No, eh, Gabriel José Hernández López. No vino. And Jocelyn Elizabeth González Cartagena. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, uh, I really thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for joining, and I'll see you tomorrow. Well, on Monday. I, I was about to say tomorrow. I'll see you on Monday, okay? Have a good night. Take care. Happy weekend, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Have a good night. Week. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. See you, Julio. Bye-bye. See you. Bye, guys.